There is an anointing that I wanted to share with you that is different or makes you different from everybody else around you. Each and every one of us have hopes and dreams. You have hopes and dreams. Yeah, hopes and dreams for your life, hopes and dreams for your family, hopes and dreams that are spirit born, actually. It's not just something that you have brought up within your own flesh, something that, that you desire that's outside of the will of God. Because, you know, uh, quite frankly, it's something that the Holy Spirit has placed on the inside of you. He wants you to have the desires of your heart fulfilled. There are things that are put in you because uh, not only is Jesus on the inside of you and the Holy Spirit leading your life and him giving to you a covenant that you can have him walk in concerning your health, concerning your finances, concerning your family, your ministry, all these things. Um, but it, they're aspects of the promises of God for our life. So God cares about you. I've got to start there. This is about you. This is not just about me preaching. I'm not just here sharing something, just telling a story. Just somehow try to uh, tickle your ears. I want you to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. I would love for you to catch the revelation that God cares about what you care about. And this anointing that I'm going to share with you here in just a couple of minutes is something that will bring joy to your life. One of the things that God cares so much about for your life is actually your livelihood. You catch that? Your livelihood. There's an anointing, there's a power, there's a revelation that is upon what I'm sharing right now. And I just pray in the name of Jesus Christ that in your heart that you would catch that anointing and that revelation. <clears throat> it's something that is going to open areas of mystery into your life. All these things I will explain. Uh, welcome, welcome all of you. Praise God. We live in a trying time. I don't really need to tell you that, but I'll bring it up. One of the things that we have to face, you and I, CK, all of us, is that in this world today, how do we receive the promises of God into our life? He's given us these promises. He said you could be saved, so <clears throat> we received the salvation. He said you could be baptized in the Holy Spirit. We received that spirit baptism. He said that you can have health, that you can be healed. We've been receiving those healings. He's also said that he would take care of us, that my God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. How do we receive that? How do we receive? How do we reap? How do we get what God has promised into our lives in a time, a day, an hour, a nation where it seems like all of these obstacles are against us? That's what I wanted to share with you. I want to give to you a secret. Do you like secrets? Well, I have one for you today. It's a divine secret. It's a secret that the Holy Spirit is going to release into your life. Are you ready for that secret? Well, in order to talk about it, I have to go to the scriptures. Uh, let, me, let me start with a story. Actually, this story is in Genesis 28. And it's about Isaac. Remember, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Abraham, God gave the covenant to. And his son, Isaac, is walking and wants to live out that covenant and all the provisions that have given uh, by God. In Genesis 28, 1, listen to this. It says, there was a famine in the land. Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. There's a, a famine in the land. What does he do about that? Do you know that in the United States of America, there's a famine right now? What kind of a famine am I talking about? There's a famine as far as the social, political structure in America now. 
and the economic structure under this administration, there is a famine of the word. There is a famine of common sense. There is a, uh, a famine with inflation and possible recession. All of this stuff that's going on, a social and economical situation that is stacked against you. Isaac was in that kind of a situation. There was a famine in the land. Now again, let me reiterate. God had promised provision to Abraham. Now his son is facing a famine. What does he do? He says, okay, well, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to go to a different place. Then in the second verse, the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I shall tell you. What I'm telling you is that in America right now, even though we do not change geographical locations as far as leaving the country or whatever, that he has a land for us. We have to listen to the Holy Spirit. We have to obey God. He'll take us to the land. That land represents maybe for some people moving to a different city, maybe for others changing jobs, maybe for others uh, other wisdom that God brings in starting a business. But here's the real key. That land is a spiritual place that we occupy. It is a place of authority. Is it a place of faith? It is a place of promise that if we occupy that spiritual land and we absorb the anointing from the provisions of God that are in that spiritual land for us, we will be taken care of because it's God saying, live in the land which I shall give you. He has given to us through the Lord Jesus Christ this special land, and there is an anointing on the land. Then in verse 12, it says, then Isaac sowed in that land. What land? Not in the land of famine, even though he was in a place of famine. He sowed in that place of anointing the wisdom of God. He sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. I want you to reap a hundredfold. I want you to be blessed by the Lord. So we're talking about a land. Where can we live? That God said his promises will be fulfilled, that we will have peace, that the crops will grow, that the cattle and the sheep will multiply, and that prosperity will be ours. You catch it? Now, I want to jump up to the New Testament, and I will go to the book of Philippians, and I'm going to tell you what that secret is. Open your heart. Listen. In verse 10, Paul says, writing to the Philippians, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, now at last that your care for me has flourished, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. So he's talking about lack and giving and all this stuff. But here's the secret coming up. Are you with me? Verse 11. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned. Very important word in whatever state I am, to be content. Another important word, we'll come back to them. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned, again, both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And then he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Christ is a third word that I want to look at with you today. A lot of people read those scriptures and they think a couple of different things, but today we're focusing on something different. They think something like, oh, now he's trying to talk me into just giving. If we just, he, he wants an offering. No, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm giving you the secret, okay? Other people think, well, this scripture is about just how to be content, meaning to just go with the flow. Whatever happens, 
you know, you don't have control over it. And we just take whatever occurs as, you know, God's will for our lives. No, I'm not saying that either. Both of those things will get you into deep water. Both of those things, hot water, I should say, both of those things um, will lead you astray because they're religious in context. That's not what Paul is saying. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a secret. First of all, he said that he knew how to be abased and how to abound. Whatever the circumstances are that were coming against the Apostle Paul at that point was not just a situation for Paul. He was telling the Philippians that it was a situation for them and that they also could learn something about it. The word learn is a word that means to learn the secret of the mystery, to learn something. It's a spiritual revelation. It's a spiritual knowledge. See, I'm, t I'm talking about even what I shared with you earlier concerning Isaac sowing in the land that God promised him, told him to do that, the spiritual land, and how that he reaped a hundredfold, regardless of the fact that in the natural realm, there was a famine. In this famine that we're facing in the United States of America right now, the, uh, we have the ability to be in the spiritual land to where those things in the natural realm don't make the difference because there's something else. We are going to learn the secret of. There is a secret there in the spiritual realm that absolutely unfolds, unwraps, reveals what it is that God has for us and makes it possible for us like Isaac to reap a hundredfold in the land of famine. I'm talking to you about a secret that allows finances to come to you, flow through you, and to keep you separate above and apart from what it is that everybody else around you is going through. This anointing makes you different from them because they don't know what it is. They're operating according to worldly circumstances. They're just trying to get along. They're trying to make more money, do this, do that. Uh, and, and, and God bless them. I pray for them uh, in this kind of climate. But you are child of the king. You are part of the lion's army. You are filled with the spirit of God. You are numbered among those who now have a secret and learning this secret is what unfolds your ability to rise up above all of those circumstances and to come out on top and for you to have money when people around you don't, for you to have gas in your car, food on your table, clothes for your children, money to pay your bills, your utilities, all of those things that you need because those are the desires of your heart that God wants to give to you. Now, have I got your attention? How do we do this? What is the secret then? The secret of that mystery. Paul says, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. The secret is being content. Oh, now, Wait a minute. But Prophet Mike, content, doesn't that mean just take it as it comes? No, it does not. The word content there is a specific word that Paul chose. It's a word that means to be self-sufficient and independent of the circumstances. The circumstances are real in your life around you. But learning the secret of the mystery of how to be self-sufficient, independent of those circumstances. That's what Paul was talking about, is that there is a place in God that we can be content. And then he said, I have learned how to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. In other words, Paul was saying that his contentment 
was based upon the fact that he knew that he, through God, was going to be above and beyond and independent of the circumstances. It was not sit down and let the circumstances rule over you. It's rise up above and you rule over the circumstances in your life. This anointing, because remember, here it is. I want to go to the third word I talked to you about. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's referring to that. The strength from Christ is what allows us. But listen to me. The word Christ means anointed one or anointing. Now, he's talking about Jesus Christ. We know that. I don't want to take anything away from that. But he's referencing a place. It's part of that spiritual land that is ours, that is in Christ. It is an anointing that comes upon the body of Christ. It's an anointing that is in you. It's in me. That anointing unlocks the secret of the mystery of how to live independent of the circumstances and be self-sufficient because of who Christ is within us. And that strength that comes through us is what allows us to go forward. It's an anointing, an anointing, an anointing. What is an anointing? Anointing is something that is God-breathed. Anointing is the Holy Spirit rubbing an oil or an ointment of anointing upon our lives that empowers us to do this. That anointing that lives on the inside of you is a secret that is to be unlocked so that anointing rises up. The anointing will lead you, yes, as far as a job search or any of these other kind of things. But the anointing is an external, I'm talking about Holy Spirit, maybe internal is a better word, condition of the Spirit moving through your life. That anointing is not just based upon what you do. There's nothing wrong with doing. We pray, we receive anointings, and then we walk them out. But so many people think, if I just get a second job, then that will take care of it. That's the wisdom of the Lord. Other people would think, well, I've got to somehow by my own flesh, my own intellect, my own working abilities to just create a situation that I can get by. There's nothing wrong with your abilities, but here's the thing. They have to follow the anointing. The anointing is within you. The anointing is something that comes on you. Isn't that what you think about with other situations in your life? When you go to church, do you say, I hope the anointing is there today, or I love being in the anointing and when we sing and we worship, the anointing comes and it just envelops me and I, I maybe I cry or I'm joyous or I just feel the love and the power of God or somebody is praying for me, I'm praying for somebody else and I really want that anointing there because I want them to be healed. An anointing is something that is beyond your ability. The anointing for supernatural finances is beyond your ability. It is you, I'm going to say it again, learning the secret of being above the circumstances, this mystery of anointing from within and up on, that we can go into every circumstance, whether we abound and have a bunch, whether we are abased or we're struggling. We're trying to figure out we need more in that particular area, but it's not for us to figure it all out in our own brains. It is for us to tap in to the anointing. Once you tap into the anointing, then you listen to the Holy Spirit and figure out whatever it is he's leading you to do in the anointing. I hope you're catching this. That's the secret that makes you different from everybody else around you. You have that anointing of Christ. 
And it's the anointing that is going to put you over. It is the anointing that is going to bring, let's just be real, it's going to bring money to you. That anointing is going to allow you to excel when other people around you aren't. Now, that anointing of prosperity also has anointings of other things for youth and health and wisdom and so forth that is there. But let's don't leave that out. I want you to see there is an anointing for money, for finances, for prosperity, for growth, for advancement, for all of those things. So yes, you have to rise up in that anointing, authority, faith, all of those things. But it is a secret for success that Paul lived in, that Isaac walked in, and that he was telling the Philippians, and through them us, that we can have that secret. And it brings contentment, which is self-sufficiency, not flesh sufficiency, self, born again, spirit filled, godly, operating anointing, in power, in wisdom, in miraculous, anointing, self-sufficiency. And it's there for you. Praise God. And I'm going to pray for you right at this moment. And as I do, I want you to just accept this anointing transfer. It's in you. All I'm doing is unlocking something. Through revelation, it's the Holy Spirit that's doing it. But yet, he's asking me to release that upon you so that it unlocks and it comes forward. Are you ready for that? Because I want you, I want you to be happy. I want you to have all of your needs supplied. So here it comes right now. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, as these wonderful people are listening to me and they're expecting the anointing to hit them, I call in the spiritual realm now for that anointing to rise up, to be unlocked, to be released within them by revelation and by the move and by the hand of the living God as the Holy Spirit touches them. Anointing, release and come up out of them. Release, come up on them, flow through them now. Release so that they operate in the secret of the mystery of being self-sufficient, independent of the circumstances because of Christ who is in them and flowing through them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Fulfill your promises to them, Lord, I pray. Covenant provision, I pray. Make them who they ought to be in the name of Jesus and provide all things that they need in the name of Jesus Christ. I praise you for that, Lord God. And I give you the honor and the glory because I guarantee you people, I guarantee you that this anointing that rises up, what it'll do is it keeps your mind straight. It keeps you in alignment with heaven and heaven's will for your life. It keeps you in a place of peace and faith and authority where as you confront and deal with all these circumstances that are around you, you remain independent of them. And the anointing carries you through. And you keep going. And you keep going. And you endure. And you have patience. And you have long suffering. And you stand in faith. And you keep going. And then you reap a hundredfold in the land of famine and everybody around you wonders what in the world you did and you get to tell them about Jesus and this anointing that I'm talking to you about. Praise God. And I'm talking a little bit about authority. Right over my left shoulder there, my book, Third Heaven Authority by Mike Thompson. Praying from heaven's perspective.
learning how to do that. I really encourage you, if you haven't read the book, to go ahead and buy it. The audio book is out now. You can go to Amazon and uh, buy both of them. You can also get the Kindle version. Um, and I've got all three, but, you know, it helps me. I listen to it in the car or other places, the audio book. Um, I read it. It is a good Christmas present. Um, the Lord told me to write the book for the body of Christ. And if he told me to write the book, then it means that everybody should read it who's in the body of Christ. So absolutely, get it get it for all your friends. Get it for all your family. And uh, it'll change their lives forever, guaranteed. Praise God. Also, I want to ask uh, you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And while you're subscribing to the channel, is would you go and check your notification bell? Uh, click on the bell. The reason I'm saying to check that is because even if you've done it before, sometimes the way that the algorithms and everything work is that you don't receive the messages anymore, the notifications. So uncheck it, check it again, make sure that you get those uh, notifications about all the videos that are coming forth. Praise God. Um, also, the last thing I wanted to share with you today, and then I'll let you go enjoy the rest of your day, is that the website is in the description, the link. And if you go to the website, see what's going on around us, there also is a secure donation page. And I'm just going to ask you to sow into the profits ministry for CK and I and reap the profits reward. Uh, I'm not going to take that out of the context of Philippians when Paul was sharing that secret. It was in the full secret of them supporting his ministry. So God wants to prosper you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. We'll talk to you later.